When we describe the position of an object in space, we do so by specifying three coordinates. But in order for those three coordinates to be meaningful, you not only need to know the coordinates, you also need to know what coordinate system was used. For example, suppose I have a Cartesian coordinate system like this. And suppose I want to express the location of this point here. I would express the position of this point by giving the x, y, z coordinates. For example, this point that I've drawn here might be, say, 5 in x, 3 in y, and maybe 2 in z, for example. Now, let's suppose that I would use the cylindrical coordinate system instead. I can express the location of this exact same point, but the numbers will be different. In a cylindrical coordinate system, I would write the angle between a zero reference point, which in this case might be the x-axis, and the point, like this. We'll call this angle theta. The distance of the point from the center axis of the coordinate system, which I'll represent here with r, and the height above the base plane, which is the same as the z coordinate of the point. Now, the location of the point did not change, but the three numbers that I would use to represent the location of the point did change. In the Cartesian system, the x, y, z position of this point is 5, 3, 2. In the cylindrical coordinate system, the position of the point r, theta, z would be about 5.8, 31 degrees approximately, and 2 for the z height. Now, note that these three numbers are different, but the three numbers for the cylindrical coordinate system can be gotten from the numbers of the Cartesian system. Similarly, we could express the location of this same point using the spherical coordinate system. In that case, I would still use the angle theta, but then I would have another angle, this angle right there, which I'll call phi, and then the length of this line, I'll just call that r2 here, and then I could write the position of this point using theta, phi, and r2. We could get the values of theta, phi, and r2 also from the x, y, z coordinates. We could write equations that define how we transform the location of a point from one of these coordinate systems to another coordinate system and express the location of the same point in the different coordinate systems. Now, in today's video, we're talking about something called color space. Color space works in a very similar way to coordinate space. Imagine for a moment that all of the colors that are possible and visible to our camera are in a box. In the last video, we learned about the RGB color space. The RGB color space is roughly analogous to the Cartesian coordinate system. So you might imagine that this box is represented by one coordinate for the red color, one for the green color, and one for the blue color. Here, I've drawn all of the axes in the same color because I'm going to try to represent several different color spaces, and I'm going to use the different colors to represent different color spaces in this diagram. But these values of R, G, and B represent the brightness of 
the color or the object that we're looking at when viewed through a filter that only admits a particular color of light. So in other words, the value along the red axis is the brightness of the pixel when the object is viewed through a filter that only admits red light. The second number on the green axis is the brightness of the object when viewed through a green filter. And the number um, on the third axis is the brightness of the object when viewed through a blue filter. But just like spatial coordinate systems, the RGB color space is not the only way to represent a color. In this video, I'll, we'll be taking a look at two other common color spaces, HSV and YUV. HSV stands for Hue, Saturation, and Value. Hue refers to what color the color is. For example, red as opposed to blue or green. Saturation refers to how much of the hue is in the color. For example, if we would look at a color and say that is the bluest blue, we would be referring to a blue hue that had a high saturation. On the other hand, if we would refer to a color as having just the slightest hint of blue, would still be a blue hue, but its saturation would be very low. Value refers to the brightness of the color. A color that has the minimum value would be totally dark, and a color with the maximum value would be very bright. HSV is often considered to be analogous to a cylindrical coordinate system. In this color space, the angle around the circle is the hue, H. The radius is the saturation, S. And the value, V, would then be the height above the base plane. Here's a picture to try and help you visualize the HSV color space as a cylindrical coordinate system. This picture is showing that hue, which is the angle around the cylinder, determines the color. Red colors, for example, are at a different angle than blue colors. Saturation is the amount of the hue that is in the color. So low saturations are in the center of the cylinder and high saturations are in the outside of the cylinder. So the bluest blues and the reddest reds are on the outside, whereas the very light blues, light reds, and so on are near the center of the low saturation values. The value goes from totally dark at the bottom to totally light at the top. Next, let's take a look at YUV. Unlike HSV, the letters Y, U, and V don't stand for anything. Rather, the letters U and V together determine the color. In other words, U and V together determine the hue of the HSV color space and Y determines the brightness. YUV color space is roughly analogous to a spherical coordinate system where the angle here would be like U while the angle here is like V. These two angles determine the color. The R2 distance, which we identified in our spherical coordinate system, that is the distance of the point from the center, represents the brightness Y. So since any color could be expressed in any one of these three color spaces, 
why should we care about color spaces at all? One of the reasons has to do with a concept in machine vision known as features. A feature is any property of an object that can be detected by vision which distinguishes the object from other objects. Now, in the last video, we saw how we could use RGB color space to identify objects that are red, green, or blue, and ignore other objects that are different colors. The reason why it was easy to detect red, green, and blue objects in RGB color space is because red, green, and blue colors are the three dimensions in red, green, blue color space. So, let's suppose that we would like to identify objects that have a particular saturation value or a particular value, that is brightness, in the HSV color space while ignoring other objects that have a different value for saturation or value. We could use the same kind of approaches that we use in RGB color space to identify objects that are red, green, or blue to identify these objects which are unique in their hue, saturation, or value. Or we could use the same approach in YUV color space. If we know what value of U or V or Y we want to identify in an object, we could very easily use one of these other color spaces to identify objects which have that particular property. As we move through our study of machine vision, we'll be learning other methods that we can use to identify other kinds of features, such as shape or size. But knowledge of color spaces can help you identify features that have to do with color specifically.